Hello there! Originally, I didn't want to record anything else in this year because Christmas is just around the corner, which is a good opportunity to take a break from work. However, I noticed that my channel had 49 videos and it would be nice to round that number up to 50 before the end of the year. In addition, we've just reached 1000 subscribers which is a great milestone and I am very grateful to everyone who made this possible. So a new video is here and this time it will be about saving and restoring the state of our game in Godot 4. All right. So how complicated can saving the game state be? I can tell you right away that it's very simple and essentially we can manage with just one function called storevar, which belongs to the file axis class. Let me remind again that this tutorial is for Godot 4. In Godot 3, the file class was used instead of file axis. So if you are still working with version 3, don't forget to make this change or consult the official documentation. Anyway, the principle of creating save game objects will be the same in both cases. Enough theory. Let's see how we apply this principle in our game. First, I'll explain the code in GD script and then I'll demonstrate it live. So, we created a simple scene, here it is, and that is displayed when the player needs to save or load a position. As you can see, the scene contains 8 fixed positions, which is one, perhaps slightly simpler, way to do this. Another option would be to create such a list dynamically and allow players to save any number of positions. Perhaps we'll try something like that next time. So, let's switch back to GD script. And if the player decides to save a position and clicks on a slot, the function save game in the attached script is called. Let me find it. Here it is. This function generates a name for the saved position. It's the first line. This name is not unique. It consists only of the chapter name and the name of the current location, because for now we've decided not to deal with UI for manually naming positions. Then the save game function in another part of the project is called and this function performs the actual save. Let's click that and find it. OK. And here we see the whole trick. First, it's necessary to open the file for writing, which is done by the first line. We use the open compressed function to potentially make it more difficult to manipulate the content of the saved position, but using the standard open function would work just as well, since storevar saves values in binary format anyway. If we wanted to increase the security of the saved data, we could use the open encrypted or open encrypted with pass functions, but that would mean keeping the decryption key elsewhere in the game. I think it's probably not necessary to go overboard with encryption, especially when it comes to locally saved files, but of course everyone can decide for themselves. And then we directly save the necessary data. It's important to mention that our save games, specifically in this game, always start with these three lines. So we are prepared for possible changes in the structure of the save data in the future. Therefore, in addition to the position name and timestamp, we also save the version number. This allows us to correctly restore the position in the load game function based on the detected save game version. Just to prevent confusion, let me once again say that this is just our solution and the data structure of the game has become uh, quite complex for us, so it's safer to be prepared for even more intricate structures in the future. However, if your game defines its state only with one object, it's entirely sufficient to save just that one object. Okay, back to the code. 
The vast majority of the saved data is of the dictionary type. But we also have a string. And I believe that get playback function, uh, get playback position function in very terms of float. That's not a problem because the store var function is universal and works with all variants. Additionally, we also save a screenshot of the current scene, but it's not stored in the same file. We save the screenshot as a PNG file and display it in the scene for easier orientation among positions. You might be wondering if it's necessary to close the open file as well. In some languages, it's a direct obligation to avoid resource leaks and similar issues. However, GDScript takes care of closing the file on its own, as it's mentioned in the documentation. File access will automatically close when it's freed, which happens when it goes out of scope or when it gets assigned with null. However, if you want to make sure, you can call the close function in the code. But be careful if you are programming your game in C sharp. The documentation also mentions this. In C sharp, the reference must be disposed of after we are done using it. So uh, this can be done with using statement or calling the dispose method directly. And that's essentially it. The load game function, which we have here, works similarly, except it opens the file for reading, file access read, and uses get var to obtain the saved data. I would also add a few things about the location of the saved files. You've probably noticed that we used the user column slash slash prefix, which Godot translates to the user folder on each platform. And to avoid having to remember where such a folder is located on Windows, Mac, Linux, and so on, we have the option to use project and open user data folder function. Here we can uh, see clearly everything we saved so far, as we have saved games in this folder, and we also have these uh, screenshots as PNG uh, images, and so on and of course the game options. By the way, the default location for such a folder would be a subfolder of the Godot folder. Uh, for example, uh, let me just close this project and show another one. So let's get back to the project list and I think we should have the space shooter here from our other tutorial. Let's wait for it to open. And here, if I use um, open user data folder, we can see that it's in, again, in app data roaming, but it starts with Godot and app um, underscore user data. And after that is the name of the game. So this, is, this, is, this may not uh, always be what we want. However, we have the option to, to define our own folder and eliminate this entire Godot prefix. Let's get back to our game. So again, quick to project list and open all whispers of Prague. And when it gets there, let's open project settings. And we need to select this checkbox, use custom user there. If we do that, we can fill the custom user there name right here. And basically that's it. Uh, I think we already saw it before. Let me just show it again. Open use data folder and it goes directly to the app data roaming and whispers of Prague. Perfect. Okay, and now the promise demonstration of save and load directly in the game. Before I begin, I'd like to add that we use three types of position saving in our game. First, we have a manual one using UI to select it position. That's basically using this kind of UI I demonstrated before. Then we have a quick save, which is done by a shortcut Control S, and it saves the current position to a single special slot that gets overwritten with each quick save. 
And finally, there is an autosave, which is basically a save to an invisible position. It's not displayed in UI. After every change of location in the game, this position will be used if we choose the continue game option in the main menu. Why so many options? Well, I'm not a big fan of the modern trend with predefined checkpoints where saving the game position is completely beyond the player's control. But I also understand that not everyone will remember to manually save their position in a critical moment before attempting something risky in the game. So our solution is a combination of both. Okay, let's start the game and observe the save and load mechanism there. Uh, it is a point and click adventure, so there will be a lot of text and pointing and clicking of course. And we can see in the main menu that the continue game function is already uh, active. That means that I already played the game before and the auto same position exists and can be used. But let's start with a new game. Yes, of course, this is important confirm dialogue because sometimes you can click on the new game option by mistake and you would just lose your previous progress. So this is basically just to be sure that you don't that you do it intentionally. Clicking yes. Okay, let's do some basic actions in the game start. Uh, for example, I'll pick up this bottle, open the refrigerator, pick up cheese. Uh, click on the cell phone and read some messages just to change something in the game state very well and now if I select escape, press escape key or click here on the menu the in-game menu would appear and I select save game and for example this previously saved position I want to overwrite yes I do but this is just the start of the game. Let's try something more interesting and move elsewhere. For instance, to the bathroom and pick up the notebook, which is an important feature because it contains all notes made by the hero of the game. And at this point, we will save the game again. Save in this position, bathroom. And now what happens if we just exit the game and restart it? Let's do it. Uh, exit game and do it again. And since the position is stored and the user there, as I demonstrated, we can easily restore it right now. And everything should be there, including the active notebook and the things in inventory and the red uh, SMS message. So, yeah, that's basically the manual saving. And if, for example, I get back to the hallway or maybe to the office and press Ctrl S, it is also uh, documented here in the help, help page. So if I press Ctrl S and, for example, go back and press Ctrl L, I should get back to the quick save position. Yeah, pretty nice. And if I leave the game, and press continue, which will use the autosave position. I should be back in the office. Perfect. That's it. Okay, let me exit the game. I just don't want to do too many spoilers. Game is not finished yet, but it's in a good, uh, I would say, alpha state and currently being tested internally. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I managed to contribute a bit to spreading positive information about the Godot engine. And that's truly everything for this year, definitely. Take care and see you in January.